uh, regarding the super GPUs, uh, I think it's referred to the RTX 40 C series refresh. I think mm. a great perspective to ha have when reviewing the products is to find the answer to quote unquote, what screen is this for? Obviously you'll get better performance if you pay more money, but how much do you really need to spend to have a good time with PS5 Series X quality graphics on 1080p, 1440p or 4K monitors, assuming your GPU limited. Just looking at a bunch of charts provided by other outlets makes it seem like the only GPU to get if you have a 4K monitor is an RTX 4090, but I know that's not true. Running these GPUs at the quote unquote optimized settings on a per game basis should make for some very interesting results that would effectively help the end user to reduce their GPU budget at a time when the price of these things is ever increasing. NVIDIA and AMD know that just running benchmarks at native 4K with ultra settings is ultimately a disservice to their own GPU performance and use it as a way to upsell the con the customer into buying a better GPU. Alex has shown you can easily get 30 to 40% more performance with some smart cutbacks to settings. That's the difference between a 400 GPU and an $800 GPU if you're right. just going off raw GPU performance increases. Uh, interesting point this, Alex, which is, you know, I don't think you... I've, I've sort of had issues with this in the past where, you know, NVIDIA or AMD will say, hey, this, this GPU is designed for 1440p gaming. Right. And we're seeing it now actually with the 4070 Super, which is, you know, basically as fast as, you know, if the benchmarks are to be relieved, it's kind of almost as good as a 4070 Ti, which in turn is almost as good as a 3090, which which we both know can produce fantastic results on a 4K screen. I think it is about optimized settings. It is about um, accepting that upscaling is now part of the mix. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a curious one. I mean, you know, I've played um, stuff like, you know, Marvel Spider-Man at 4K with DLSS performance mode on the 3060, and it was a perfectly great experience. 60 frames per second, optimized settings. It is it is a bit weird to have this labeling. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the... I, I get what the person's saying, right? Because, like, if you're on a 1440p screen and... That's why those benchmarks exist that show the card working at different resolutions. I think it's to give people like a generic idea of what it's like, uh, but it's also then just doing them blindly, the benchmarks at ultra, which is not very, it's not actually a realistic window. It's just, that's just to create a baseline to compare to other things, but not a way people actually will use the card. So I think that's what the, the person's getting at here. And like the real way you use a card is at a fixed res monitor and you want to have the game run at or close to your refresh rate or at least 60, minimum 60, I think for some people. And then if you'd produce a review like that, you'd have a very different understanding of a card. And in fact, I think with all the cards that are coming out right now, the supers, you'd say they're all incredible at that point in time because you'd be using optimized settings, you'd be using DLSS and you realize like, man, I can get like HFR experiences in every single game out there with ray tracing. Like that's yeah. crazy. So you'd realize that these GPUs are incredibly powerful and uh, then the review would just be glowing uh, <laughs> at that point in time. But yeah, I agree exactly what they're saying. It, it's it's a hard thing to do because you when you look at making one of these GPU reviews, you still want to give a sense of what the rest of the market is, but a, maybe a real GPU review is actually saying like, okay, what can we actually do with this card to produce good experiences? Yeah, and then that's a different thing entirely. Yeah, I mean, I I sort of take issue with the uh, 4K Ultra benchmarks that come out, which basically show nothing being playable on anything other than a 4090, which is kind of weird because you just wouldn't be using native 4K to begin with, because the upscaling solutions are so good these days, and you probably wouldn't be using Ultra because the difference between Ultra and High is often non-existent or very difficult to pick up by the human eye. So, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, how are you helping the audience with that particular type of coverage? It's a bit really kind of weird, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything to add to that one, John? No, I mean, uh, his point about you know, the benchmarks and, and how they are kind of make it seem like you maybe need more hardware than you might actually need to run. Uh, obviously getting that Steam Deck made me think more about that when I was surprised to see even something as lightweight as that hardware is able to provide pretty good experiences in games you might not expect. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, like, you know, you scale up more with an actual PC and a mid-range graphics card, and I think you can achieve a lot. 
Is yeah, it? absolutely. Right. I mean, it is about basically, um, you know, the the power differentials between the cards, but I don't think you can pigeonhole any card as specific to a, a, a certain display type. No. Um, I can see why NVIDIA would maybe say, okay, 4060 is for 1080p, because they can look at their telemetry and see that the vast majority of like 2060 and 3060 owners are still on a 1080p screen, right? That mm-hmm. kind of makes sense, but that doesn't preclude the... Um, these cards from being run on 1440p screens where yeah, actually exactly. they tend to perform quite well um, as long as there aren't any VRAM yeah. limitations. 